back to Summer Money and our panel special on small business employing crisis communication tips. We're joined by Kelly Connolly from Connolly Communications, Marie Najjar from Public City, and we welcome John Bissett from the Public Relations Institute of Australia. John, welcome. Can I start to ask by asking you a little bit more about the PRIA and how it works? Sure. We're the um uh, biggest industry body for the pub for public relations and communications in mm. Australia. We, we essentially have um, 3,000 uh, individual practitioners and about 180 uh, consultancies around the country that are all practicing. Mm. Yeah. What are some tips, John, for people who running business uh, realise they need some kind of public relations tool uh, and don't know where to start? Look, I think the first thing is you really need to have a think about what you want to do. Mm. Um, have a look on our website, have a look at other sources on the web, um, get some advice from s some friends, some people mm. about mm. what you want to do because public relations in a, is a very diverse um, industry. Once you know a little bit about what you want to do, then you can possibly seek some advice from a, a public relations consultancy and they all specialise in various different things. Mm. Um, and. And talk we'll do different things within public relations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, if a small business is considering uh, having somebody in-house or a consultant, what are the pros and cons of that, John? Look, I think it depends on your size, it depends mm. on what you want to do. Um, if you have someone in-house, they're often an all-rounder, they need to do everything. Um, if you want to run a campaign, a so, sort of a social media mm -hmm, campaign, mm -hmm. you probably may need to go and get some expertise. So I think, again, it depends on what you want to do, it depends on what size of business you are, it depends on how much money you want to spend. So it's, a, it, it's something you need to factor into your business plan. Great. We played a case study in the program a short time ago on a crisis faced by Qantas. I want to look briefly at social media and a case study where the police service in Queensland used social media brilliantly to communicate messages to people who were flood affected or going to be flood affected. Again, Kate Williams prepared this report. The deadly waters that raged through the Lockyer Valley west of Brisbane seemed to come from nowhere. The emergency required quick thinking and even quicker communications to towns under threat. When police realised the flash flood was headed towards Gatton, they used Twitter to get the message out. One tweet read anyone living near the Lockyer Valley should evacuate immediately to higher ground. Anyone with a Twitter account and a mobile phone had access to the message immediately. As the flood crisis worsened, hundreds of tweets by police media in Queensland were shared to residents in flood-prone areas. The immediate nature of the communication meant many journalists were following the messages too. More Australians use Facebook than they do Twitter, so it too became a powerful crisis communication tool. Police argued that Facebook allowed them to control the message and respond to people directly without a direct filter by mass media. Before the tragedy, about 6,500 people were following the local police service's Facebook page. As the demand for information intensified, that number became 165,000. The successful use of social media in crisis by the Queensland Police Force is sure to be a case study for other government agencies. Kate Williams, Sky News Business. I want to ask you as a panel all to respond to the absolute explosion of social media and, and how it's influenced communications for small business. And I know all of you use social media and you all tweet. I think I follow all of your, your tweets. Um, uh, Kelly, Twitter, you're, you're a prolific tweeter. What do you see as the value of Twitter? Well, I, I um, remember Mia Friedman, who was the magazine editor and now runs Mamma Mia, which is, and, and she's a prolific Twitter user. She said to me in the makeup room at Channel 9 one day, Kelly, are you on Twitter? And I said, no. And she said, well, you should be because mm. it's the best tool for a journalist. And I found mm. having even left journalism and, and moving out of my own business, it's become the best networking tool. In fact, it's the way you invited me on the program exactly. tonight. <laughs> um, and, and I found it's how I, I get direct information on things as well. I, I recognise a lot of the community isn't on Twitter. Mm. So I think it's a, a useful tool by a business in PR or by a communications mm. organisation in getting a message out. I think it's an important adjunct to everything else. Mm. John and Marie, it's really become crucial in many public relations campaigns on a broad scale, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Um, the thing is with, with Twitter and social media is that just because you're not involved in it doesn't mean people aren't talking about you mm. on Twitter or on Facebook. So you really do need to be there. There are a number of reasons. The immediacy, um, it's direct, so there's no gatekeeper, for instance, like when you're working mm. with the media. Um, and it's a way for you to update your own company information, get it out there without the use of a web designer or making you know significant changes to a website. So mm. very valuable. How have you seen it change the industry, John? Look, I think it's what's happened or what's happening is that two-way communication. It's no longer you just talk in one direction to your customer or your, your stakeholders. It's now very much two-way and that's, that's why I'm using it because mm. you can have those, those conversations with, in my case, the members of the Institute. Mm. Um, so it's very important, I think, in, in, that's the important change. The, the messages can be so quick and to see the police Facebook page go, I think Kate said, from 6,500 to 165,000 over mm. a, a, a month. Is social media considered a, a more honest form of communication? If, if a small business is looking at getting those direct messages, uh, will social media work, Kelly? It can be honest and mm. direct and it can be immediate, like in the case of the police chief in, in, in Queensland who was doing that direct from meetings. So there was no, let's write a press release now and let's then sub that and then let's get that checked. He was doing it direct, mm. which is great. But with immediacy comes problems and comes we've risk. seen that. And, and that is you've got to be so careful what you put out there, like sort of think before you speak is, yeah. <laughs> is a really good lesson. Marie? Um, look, I think it's also great because you get to listen, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is very important. So you can learn as much as you can, just you know, directly communicate. But I think when it comes to um, using the likes of a, a Twitter or a Facebook to communicate, you've just got to be sure that the honesty, it's not Facebook mm -hmm. that's keeping you honest. You have to be honest in the message that you're putting out. So it really mm -hmm. still all comes down to you. Mm -hmm. John Bissett, in the industry, has there been a desire by practitioners to get more up to speed with social media? And has the PRIA been able to play a role in that? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's very important. And a lot of traditional consultancies um, have taken a bit of time to, to particularly learn how to use social media. And I think it's an evolving um, channel anyway mm. so it's evolving every day and new things are happening so it's it's everyone's learning as they go really mm. Mm. Marie what should be at the heart of a crisis communications plan for a small business um, the first thing is a plan. <laughs> the first thing is a plan. The first thing is to have a plan and have to plan. be prepared. Um, the second thing is to um, identify who your audiences are straight away and what they need to hear in mm. order for them to know how to continue doing business with you or, or to continue um, representing you. I think you need to equip, to anyone, equip anyone that's on the front line of your business to answer questions, you know. So it's not a matter of, oh, I can't help you, can I get back to you? Be immediate with the, mm. with the kind of information that you mm. give is, is critical. Kelly, what if a small business leader is terrified mm. of the media, mm. is frightened about speaking in public? Should, should that be a role for them? Should it, can they be trained or is it a matter of possibly handing it on to someone else? I, I think everyone um, will benefit from training. I'm not just mm. saying that because I run a training <laughs> business, um, but because I've seen the results in people who are really scared about speaking. But once you, you tell them that there's a few easy tips mm. and there are things you can remember to calm the nerves and, and to stay on message, I, I think it's critical if you're in a leadership position, you need to either be a spokesperson for your business or you need to have someone within your business at a senior level mm. uh, who can communicate. Mm. Well, at the end of the day as well, when there's um, particularly bad news, people want to hear about it from the top and they want to know what's going on and make sure that the, the, the leader or the CEO is engaged. You made the example of the, mm. the head of the bank who wasn't even in the country when the crisis yes. hit. Mm. People are looking around saying, all right, thanks for the answers, but where's the, where's the, where's the, the boss? boss? <laughs> <laughs> another, the boss? Another really good example of that is a guy called Stephen Duckett. I'm not sure if you've heard about him. I learned from him <laughs> about him on the web. An Australian, a head of the, the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence in Australia, headhunted to a position overseas as the head of Alberta Health. Now, he came out of a crisis in Alberta Health walked out of the meeting and the media were waiting for him. So he had a biscuit in his hand, which he oh, called a cookie. Oh, the cookie man? The oh. cookie, cookie monster. Man. The cookie and monster. he started eating this cookie as he's mm. going along and he was refusing to answer the media questions. Now, he said, well, look, there's a media conference in half an hour, sort of halfway through his ramble. Um, but that wasn't the point. As you said, people want to hear from the leader mm. and he was not making himself available. Well, I mean, you know, he lost his job.
And he was eating a cookie. I mean, how important is the situation <laughs> if you've got more time to eat your Oreo? He, he looks you know. like a fool. He looked like Absolutely, a fool. Absolutely, yeah. 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 John, media is a big focus in public relations, but crucially, not the only one. Oh, exactly. Mm. And, and it's often mistaken that public relations is publicity, and it's not. Mm. I mean, public relations is a lot of things. It's um, internal communications. It, it's really about talking to your, your stakeholders. And, um, you know, often there's three words used in whatever definition of public relations, and that's mm. relationship, communication, um, and it's important to, to remember that. Mm. What do you think the challenges are for a small business um, budgeting for public relations, particularly if they don't understand the science? I know that's a broad question for the panel. Do, do you want to tackle that, Marie? Yeah, because I've, I've seen it. I've seen small businesses approach us, for example, for, for assistance, even if it's not in relation to a crisis, but for a relationship management mm. or a media relations campaign. And they are scared um, away by fees and costs. And you know, Public even relations has a reputation for being expensive. It, there's it, no denying it that. It does, is there? but there's a, there's a very good reason for it, and that oh, is relationships us, are critical to any business, yeah. <laughs> um, and particularly in a crisis. So I think... Um, in my mind, a small business that takes its relationship seriously mm. should start by actually having strong relationships internally and with their partners and customers, and that becomes just good. Mm. That's a part of good business practice. Mm. I think if they want to grow beyond that, and if they don't have someone internally, then they should um, seek the support of mm. someone, say, through the Public Relations Institute of Australia, be it internal or external. Mm. I guess there's another way of calculating it, Kelly. What is what is the ultimate cost if things go bad versus mm. what you should budget for in communications? Well, well exactly. Mm. And, and people put aside marketing um, budgets. Well, we're looking at the same thing, really. If you don't get your message out um, and you don't do it properly, and let's, I mean, forget crisis management. At any point, if you want to promote your business mm. somehow, you can, you can do so many things in the media, if you know how, <laughs> to promote your brand without having to pay advertising dollars. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, you can offset that cost as well. Mm. But, I mean, I, I recognise it's, it's a big, it's a big, um, it's a big load of money for a small business perhaps start with one media training session that you might share with some colleagues mm. and then you have a relationship and you decide whether you like that person mm. if there's a crisis call them in I think the other thing to evaluate particularly in the time of a crisis is not just the cost of getting help it's the cost of not getting help mm. and that's how it's difficult to measure but um, I can assure you <laughs> that if you mm. don't handle a situation properly particularly in a crisis it will cost your reputation long term mm. because people will judge you based on how you handle yourself mm. in a crisis. John, what do you say to the reputation that public relations is, is an expensive investment? Look, I think you've got to compare it, you've got to decide what you want to do and you've got to compare it to, to other um, things like advertising. Mm. You know, an, a, an advertisement on a in prime time television is going to cost you an absolute fortune as well. Mm. Um, so it's a matter of comparing those sort of things. What do you want to do? What's the purpose of this public relations? Mm. Um, get some advice around a crisis so that you know when a crisis hits, as Marie says, you don't mm. have to then spend thousands and thousands of dollars on repairing your reputation at okay. the end. Mm. Kelly Conley, Marie Najjar and John Bissett, thank you so much for being on the panel today. It's been great to have you on board. And I do want to say mm. that there, uh, you were all independently sourced. There are no current or planned financial relationships with any of us. It's been great to have your expertise <laughs> on board. Thanks thank for you. having me.